Minister, the G20 is over, but uh, you're doing one last G20 event. Well, this is probably the best G20. As I said before in the speech, I think it's all very well for uh, the, the world's most powerful 20 politicians to get together uh, and uh, make and, and together uh, present goals and look at where their respective countries and the rest of the world should be in a few years' time. It's all very well for politicians to say that, but the people that make up the fabric and the culture of each of our societies also need to be brought along in that process. And what we're seeing tonight at the last G20 event uh, that uh, Queensland will host uh, is all of these remarkable faiths and cultures and religions uh, coming together um, and uh, in an in a unbelievable spirit. Everyone's here, they're all having a great time uh, and uh, the understanding that will flow from this, uh, hopefully to next year when it's held in Istanbul, I think is fantastic. Um, how many faiths are actually represented here tonight? Well, they did go through them all, and I think there's uh, uh, you know, 12 or 13 uh, different faiths. I added in one, and I said, uh, well, you've also got a Presbyterian, that's me. Uh, so they had to add one more onto that. Uh, but uh, just this, this, this range uh, of, the, of the major faiths that make up uh, our world today uh, is just extraordinary. When you look at sometimes the difficulty uh, in our world's history uh, that's been caused by religion and some of the conflicts uh, that have, we've had over the millennium from, uh, from different religious and cultural differences. To be able to see this tonight and this gathering come together in a spirit of understanding and a spirit of, of, uh, of, of being together, being open-minded and looking at ways of how all of the cultures and all of the religions uh, can understand each other, can support each other, uh, can assist each other in their various countries, uh, is what makes this a very, very important gathering. Um, G20 is about politics, about economy, uh, about finance, uh, and now you've introduced a fourth element, uh, interfaith. Well, interfaith is probably one of the, uh, one of the most important uh, of, of those. Uh, it's, it's the ability for people to understand each other. And if you look at the, at the makeup of the G20 without going into um, any of the, uh, the personalities involved, a little bit of friction here and a little bit of friction there, that's the art of politics. Uh, but what is, what is happening here uh, is that people from all faiths, all religions, from all around the world are happy to sit down and talk about how as a, as a group that represents in our own special way for each and every one of us, our God, uh, that they are able to, to work together and by working together they can do a lot more than most politicians do and can to solve some of the world's great problems. So has there been much consensus during the summit? Well, from what I've seen, there has. Um, uh, but all you've got to do, and you can hear the background noise, uh, there is about 150 people in this room who are sitting down to eat together. Um, and uh, regardless of what's happened during the course of the conference today, the fact that there is all this laughter and this chatter of people sitting down uh, who, can, who can talk and who can understand, who will take away friendships, that will share information either across Australia or across the globe as the years roll by is fantastic. Um, tomorrow there's going to be a special communique uh, sent off to the G20 leaders. Uh, do you, can you give us any indication what that will be? I don't know what the, uh, the communique is going to be, but I'm going to take great pride and great interest in, in, in having a look at it. As I indicated before, I'm going to make sure that uh, uh, the communique and a recording of what has happened at this conference uh, certainly sits on the Prime Minister's desk, uh, it'll sit on the, on the Premier's desk, uh, and anything I can do to make sure that we move from this first um, uh, summit to the second one in Istanbul in 12 months' time to coincide with the, the other G20 event that happens there. Uh, anything I could do, I certainly will be doing. Um, could we just zoom back a bit? Uh, I just see there's another poster here. Oh, OK. Uh, cultural diversity yes. and G20, they go hand in hand? Well, they do. The greatest strength that, uh, that Queensland has is our cultural diversity. We are, we are made up 
uh, from the very first time the, the, you know, Captain Cook sailed up the east coast of Australia. We are made up of migrants. That is our whole history. This is where Australia has been. You know, I often tell the story when uh, I grew up in Brisbane, uh, I um, was sometimes set down to the shops by my mother to, you know, to buy some groceries or whatever it was, and she would say to me, I'll go down to the Greeks and buy this because they sold the groceries. Um, but that was the only multicultural type shop or someone who owned a business uh, that wasn't, uh, didn't have sort of, uh, you know, blonde hair and blue eyes as a sort of an Anglo-Saxon background. Uh, so it was the, the you know, one, one little business. If we wanted to have a multicultural dining experience in those days, it was a local Chinese takeaway. That was it. Um, and I'm not that old yet. But the way the country and the state has developed uh, in this last 20 or 30 or 40 years has just been enormous. 220 different cultures make up modern day Queensland. We speak 220 different languages. More importantly, from the point of view of tonight, 100 different religious or belief systems are practised in Queensland today. That's how different it is uh, from the days that I was going to school and grow growing up. So it is our greatest strength. And we've, it's one of those things, though, that we need to, we need to work on constantly. We need to make sure that everyone outside is, is, is brought along on this great journey that we're going on to understand cultural diversity, to understand the traditions and the faiths of the many, many people that have come to call Queensland home. Uh, that's part of my job. That's the best part of my job. Uh, tonight, as part of the first uh, uh, G20 uh, Interfaith uh, Summit, uh, you wanted two uh, particular people. Would you like to uh, just share a little bit about that? Uh, well, certainly um, uh, the UAE, United Arab Emirates, uh, from the point of view of, uh, of what the Sheikh has done there uh, to promote uh, religious and cultural diversity uh, in the United Arab Republic, uh, Emirates, sorry, was, was, was recognised uh, and uh, locally uh, there is a certain Buddhist temple uh, down at Priestdale that uh, I've had uh, a lot to do with, particularly through Buddha's birthday festivals, my visits to the temple and I just couldn't be happier. Um, what uh, you collectively do uh, at, the, at the temple, not only for Buddha's birthday, but uh, the, the amount, uh, the, the way that you get involved in the community, the way you support the community. I think in, in, uh, when we were recognising uh, the temple, the 150 odd thousand dollars that was raised in support of the floods and so forth, uh, it's, it's what I was talking about before. An intricate part of modern day Queensland and congratulations. Uh, Minister, thank you very much and uh, congratulations on a uh, very wonderful summit. Good on you. Thank you very much.